Hello dear students, my name is Adil Yusuf from Computer Science Engineering Department and today we will discuss divide and conquer strategy in design and analysis of algorithm. As we know, it is an important design strategy. By uh, design strategy, we mean it is an approach to solve a particular problem. In divide and conquer, basically we divide, uh, it is composed of three steps. First step is uh, divide, right? In uh, this, we divide the original problem in a stance, in a stance into several sub-problems, P1, P2, P3 and so on up to Pk. Let us suppose uh, we have a problem P and we solve this sub-problem P into several sub-problems P1, P2, P3 and so on up to Pk. One more thing uh, I would like to clear over here, these sub-problems should be of the same type as that of the original sub-problem. For example, for example, uh, if the original sub-problem is searching, when we divide this original sub-problem into smaller instances, the smaller instances like P1, P2, P3 and so on, these should be of the same type as that of the original problem, right? This is the point which is to be noted over here. And after that, divide, we conquer. Or we can say solve these sub problems. These sub problems are solved recursively. Means uh, we find the solution of the each of these sub problems recursively, right? Then after that we combine the solutions. Like if we have a problem P, we divide the sub problem into P1, P2, P3, and so on up to PK. Then we solve each of these sub problems recursively, and then we combine the solution of these sub problems. It is not mandatory always to combine. For example, if we take the case of uh, search, searching technique, when we divide in searching technique, we are given a list of items like an array. Let's suppose we have, if we take the example of binary search, when we divide this at some position, I will uh, talk in the next, le next lecture, we divide it into two arrays and after that the element which is to, which is to be find, which is to be found, we divide uh, this array on that element basis. So after that, we, uh, when we divide it, we conquer only one array based on that element. Similarly, until we reach the base case and find the element. But in case of sorting technique, if we take this sorting for example merge sort when we uh, we have we are given the list of uh, items when we divide the list into sub problems and then further sub problems then we combine means here we combine the so we, we combine the base cases when we reach the base case we combine them and find the solution of the original sub problem now we will take an example before going to an example let us discuss about the running time of an algorithm. T of n is equivalent to A T n by B plus F of n. Now, as we know, we have a bigger problem in instance P and we divide this problem in instance into A number of sub-problems, right? Or we can say K number of sub-problems. So, this A is the number of sub-problems, right? And this n by b, it is the size of each sub problem. This b should be greater or equal to 1. Do you know why? Because uh, the uh, size of each sub problem should be greater or equal to 1. If we take b is equal to 1, so what does that mean? It means the size of sub problem is also equal to 1. So, it should be n by b and b should be greater or equal to 1. Means we can divide the sub problems into smaller sub problems, more than one sub problem, right? So, we, it is also called as a recurrence relation. As we know, recurrence relation, it is a relation which is, which is represented in terms, in which next term is represented in terms of its 
previous term as we know th uh, these recurrences can be solved using uh, master method we have substitution method and etc etc iterative method recursive tree method and so on now we will discuss an example of this uh, divide and conquer that is how do we detect a counterfeit queen uh, suppose we are given a bag of items bag of coins and in that bag there is a counterfeit coin that is counterfeit coin let us uh, put it in a simpler words we are given a bag and in that bag we have 16 coins right and among these 16 coins one coin is counterfeit by counterfeit we mean uh, the counterfeit coin has uh, coin has a weight less as compared to the genuine genuine genu coins right means if we take uh, a bag of 16 coins one coin, coin is counterfeit so how do we find it if we find it uh, by simply comparison we will compare first coin and second coin and we check if and we weigh them there is a machine which is used to weigh these uh, weigh these two coins if uh, we weigh them if they are equal in it means no counterfeit coin right and if weight of the first coin is greater than second we say second coin is counterfeit so if there is no counterfeit coin we will compare three and four similarly we compare them if weight is equal no counterfeit coin if there is a mismatch in the weights so one the lighter one is the counter counterfeit coin similarly we can weigh five and six right so means then we compare five and six same procedure then seven and eight and so on up to 15 and 16 means in worst case we have to compare all the coins so what what are the num how many comparisons we have done we have done eight comparisons and at the end if there is no counterfeit coin so what we have uh, done we have done eight comparisons and at the end we didn't find any counterfeit coin so this approach is not good here uh, we can use divide and conquer strategy to detect a counterfeit coin coin in a bag of coins let us suppose uh, we are again we are given same question 16 coins and we use design and uh, design strategy divide and conquer when we use divide and conquer what we will do we will divide this bag uh, into means uh, the 16 coins can be divided this is a bigger sub problems p we can divide this problem into smaller instances means eight coins and eight coins so we can take two sets of eight coins each then we compare them i mean then we weigh them the set which is lighter one will contain the counterfeit coin means uh, when we compare let us suppose it is set a and it is set b when we compare them if they are equal what did we find we found that no counterfeit coin are you getting means here in the first comparison we have detected we have decided whether a bag contains a counterfeit coin or not in the first approach which we have followed here we have to uh, we have to compare eight times means we have done eight comparisons over here and at the end we didn't find any counterfeit coin but here in the first comparison we have decided whether the bag contains a counterfeit coin or not using what approach divide and conquer approach so when we compare them let us suppose a is greater than b means uh, the weight of a is greater than the weight of b what does that mean it means the bag b is lighter or we can say the set b is lighter means the set con uh, b contains the counterfeit queen what will we do again we again divide this problem into smaller instances i will say b1 and b2 then again i will compare now it has eight coins because uh, a8 b8 now when we divide it it contains four coins right similarly it contains four coins again i weigh them the set which is lighter will contain the counterfeit coin let us suppose b1 uh, and b2 b, b2 is lighter so b2 contains the counterfeit again i will divide it the design and divide and conquer strategy so it would be let us suppose b21 
B22. So B21 will contain two kinds. It also will contain two. Then again I will weigh them. The lighter well will contain the counterfeit coin. Let us suppose this contain is the counterfeit coin. So again, when I will further divide it, it will contain one coin. It will contain one. Again I will weigh them. When I weigh them, see this is the It is obvious that the one which is lighter is the counterfeit coin. This is by using divide and conquer strategy. Means only few comparisons as compared to the uh, previous one which you have followed. So this is an example how to detect a counterfeit coin using divide and conquer strategy. Okay, now we will discuss the algorithm for this divide and conquer strategy. See here, control of abstraction, right? We have algorithm divide and conquer and P is the original sub problem. Means P can be bigger or it can be smaller. Now we will check the base case. If small P means the smaller instance of the problem. For example, if we take the searching technique. In searching, if we are given only one element, an array of only one element, let us suppose five, and we have to check whether an element is present in this or not. So it is itself a base case. It is small p. When it is small p, then it will return directly the solution of p. It can be either true or false. Means if we have we are searching for five, so it will directly return five. Or uh, if we are searching for let us suppose seven, so it will return false. Means seven is not present. So it is the base case. Means small p means when we are uh, given the base case smaller instance of the problem. Else, what we will do? We will divide this p into smaller instances, sub problems of same type. Again, I am repeating. When I, we are dividing this problem into smaller instances, let us suppose P1, P2, so on up to Pk. These sub problems should be of same type. It is not like uh, I am giving you an example of this searching, then the sub problems might not be searching. So it should be the sub problems should be of same type. Means I am dividing P into smaller instances P1, P2, so on up to Pk, right? And after that, what I will do? I will apply divide and conquer to each of these sub problems. Means, uh, like we have decided, uh, we have seen in counterfeit coin. We have divided a bag of 16 coins into 8 and 8. This is also a set of coins, set of coins. Means, same type. Then again, I am dividing it into. Means, we are dividing each sub problem, each problem into smaller instances until we reach the base case. Means, one, one, takam. Uh, when we reach up to the base case. So we apply divide and conquer to each of these sub problems. Then we uh, return the combine. After that we combine these and find the solution to the sub problem. Uh, this is the algorithm for divide and conquer. See, in divide and conquer, uh, there are some pros and cons to it. First, what is the pro? Divide and conquer supports parallelism. As we know, the original problem P is divided into sub problems. So these sub problems are independent. P1, P2, so on up to P, Pk. When these are independent, it means these can be run on a multiprocessor system. So as it supports parallelism, so these can be run on multiprocessor system because the sub problems are independent of each other. Now, what is its disadvantage? As we know, this, uh, most of these algorithms. Uh, are designed using recursion as we know the recursion in recursion the memory management is high right uh, as stacks are used for the recursive function so this was something about divide and conquer thank you